Welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I am reviewing Read or Die, the OVA. ROD, as it's otherwise known, has had two different anime adaptations ROD, the OVA, and ROD, the TV series. What's fun about Read or Die is a couple of different things. Every anime, manga, you know, version of it is its own story so you're not if, if you go back and read the manga you'll get your own you get a, a different story than if you watch the anime but they all they're all part of the same universe and they all tie together which is uh really fun and you'll see references to the different characters and some characters will grow up and and will change over the course of you know from one series to the next which is fun to watch rod the ova focuses on yomiko reedman who is a young woman and a uh, special operative who basically um, has complete control over paper. So she can take a piece of paper and make it steel sharp and turn it into a throwing weapon or make it a shield for herself. So it's now something that will, will block a bullet. And she can use paper in this strong way. And she goes on various adventures and various missions for the British Library with other people with other superpowers. Not necessarily paper-related, but it's all sort of James Bond-style, um, you know, secret agents trying to save the world. But with this really fun and interesting and unique theme around reading and books, Yomiko is a bibliophile of the First Order. And she just loves books. And so the story is book-related, besides just being about somebody who, you know, has this amazing control over paper and reads all the time and has this ridiculously huge book collection. And the story is Save the World. And I don't need to get into any spoiler territory to explain. It's, again, the James Bond kind of Save the World thing. And somewhat over the top. The, the villains often have these almost magical... Um, you know, ridiculous abilities, which is part of what makes the, the anime fun, is that it is willing to just throw crazy powers at you and see how the characters respond to that. Uh, being an OVA, this has a pretty high animation budget. Um, it came out at a time when animation budgets are um, were fluctuating quite a bit. So there are some quieter moments of animation in this, but the action sequences have a lot of wonderful kinetic energy to them, and they move around quite a bit. It's a, it's a, um, you know, this definitely feels and looks like an action anime. You will not be disappointed if you're coming in here looking for action. It's definitely there. Um, that said, the animation does have this this interesting, distinctive style where it's a little more kinetic, it's a little more active. Um, the characters move in a, um, a slightly more um, um, stylistic way than in a lot of, of typical anime series. So you'll, I think you'll find that interesting and fun. The people are obviously, um, the, when they're animating this, they're enjoying the characters and showing the characters move in various ways. Um, the direction in general is clear and clean. As an action story, it's very important that this be something where you understand where the characters are and what they're doing, and uh, so the show progresses along very quickly. It can be a little slow at points where there's some exposition sequences that just kind of go on for quite a while, and you know you need to understand those things. They do a, an impressive job of weaving in some character stuff along with the exposition scenes. So it never feels boring. Um, but there are moments where you're like, I want a little bit more action here, right? So, yes. Um, um, what's also unusual about Read or Die that, that's worked in sort of with the, the editing and the pacing of it is that it, is, it has action and it has comedy. And it has some character development. There's a lot going on here, actually, in this. There's some suspense. There's a lot of thriller elements to it. So it bounces back and forth between different styles quite deftly. As you can see here, you know, she's out shopping, and it's fun, and it's lighthearted. And then she descends down to this, this area, which feels a little bit darker and a little bit more um, 
uh, foreboding in its own way. And you know, there's something you know something more going on here than you you might expect. So that is a really fun thing about Read or Die, is that you get a lot of tonal shifts in the work that never really feel inappropriate. It feels like this is a a big honkin' OVA with a lot of of uh, things it's trying to do uh, over the course of it, which is which is really cool. Now, one of the other things Read or Die. Um, as a franchise focuses a lot on our different characters where these special agents are all very distinctive and very different and not only are their their powers and abilities different they are very distinctive characters with their own outlooks on life and their own perspectives on things people do not feel like cardboard cutouts in this OVA so that is definitely something that um, stays with you after a while, that you, you understand these characters and you feel for these characters because you see why they do what they do and where they're coming from. Um, but it's also done in this naturalistic way that doesn't get in the way of the story, right? They don't spend a lot of time with characters saying, here's why I think this. You just see their personality and that, you know, tells you what you need to know. Now, this is set in a, as I said, a rather absurd universe where you have, you know, giant swarms of insects attacking out of nowhere and characters with these paper powers and you'll see some other weird powers in this as well. Uh, you really have to sit, sit back and be willing to accept a world of superpowers. It, it's, it's a world, it is the modern world, but where every so often you run across Goku, right? Or you run across somebody with weird powers and that just exists and is a thing that you have to be willing to suspend your disbelief about and accept. I think if you do, you'll really enjoy it. This is a relatively early dub uh, in American standards of, of dubbing, and I think they really nailed the characters in this one. Yomiko has this tone to her that doesn't feel over the top, um, but where she can feel very insistent. She can, she can, she is a strong character without being somebody who is kicking butt all the time. You know, she has her own personality. But there's this grit and determination to her that is uh, that is expressed very well by the voice actor, and similarly with the other, you know, voices where they, they definitely feel right for the characters. Some of the villains are over the top to various degrees. Sometimes they feel a little bit too over the top. Sometimes not over the top enough. That's a hard thing to really get right. So just be aware that that might feel a little weird to you at times. Overall, though, I think this is definitely uh, an English dub that will work for you and, and, and work for anyone who can handle an English dub, right? Some folks just ears bleeding. But I think you'll find this an effective, uh, you know, an effective dub. And overall, I mean, I got to admit, Read or Die is one of those experiences where if you get a, a sense for it and you get a feel for it, you will find a, a wonderful roller coaster ride here of not just action, but also emotion, of character development, of characters involved in various things, and um, you're able to see what those characters believe through their actions, and you get to experience that as part of this big James Bond style plot. So again, it's not the deepest thing in the world, it's not the most complex thing in the world, but it is more interesting than almost any other just action OVA you're gonna come across. There's a whole sort of underworld of these agents you get, you get to catch glimpses of and of the technology they use and so forth that really come together nicely and fit well into an OVA that is idiosyncratic, that is not your typical story, and that's part of the fun.